In my opinion, there's not much better than homemade bread. And today, we're going French. Today's recipe comes to us from the French cookbook, which was put out by the Culinary Arts Institute in Chicago in 1955. The first step is to combine a quarter cup of warm water between 110 degrees and 115 degrees Fahrenheit with one package of yeast. Stir that around and we're going to let that sit for a while. Into a large bowl go two tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of sugar, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. And over all of that we're going to pour three quarters of a cup of hot water. The water should be warm enough to melt your butter, but not so hot that when you add the yeast later, it's going to kill it. After your butter has melted, add in a half cup of flour that has already been sifted. In fact, every time we see flour in this recipe, it is pre-sifted. After your yeast has been sitting in the water for about 5 to 10 minutes, you can add that, mix it in, and then we're going to add a very ambiguous amount of flour. The recipe calls for three and one quarter cups of flour sifted. However, it says to only use as much as it takes to create a soft dough. That needs to rest for a few minutes, so I'm going to grease my pan. On a sheet pan, you are just going to butter it and then lay down a light layer of cornmeal. Now that we've let our dough rest for a little more than five minutes. We are going to put this into the stand mixer because it's a lot easier to use the dough hook on this than it is to knead by hand. However, this certainly is not necessary. In fact, the recipe calls to do it by hand, but I'm a firm believer of if you have the technology to make it easier, use it. But if not, that's totally fine too. We're just going to let the stand mixer work here for about five minutes, adding flour as needed if your dough looks too sticky. At the end, you should have a nice elastic dough. While our dough was kneading, I took a bowl and warmed it up a little bit as per the directions, and I then buttered it. So we have a bowl that is greased and ready for our dough to go into. Our dough is a little bit sticky, but that's okay. We're going to put it into the bowl and then kind of just swish that around a little bit. And then the side that we just swished, we're going to put on top so that we have a buttered greased side on top. And then the directions say to put a layer of waxed paper and a towel over it. And we're gonna let that double in size for between one and a half to two hours or however long it takes before that dough is doubled. All right, it's been just about two hours and our dough has certainly doubled in size and apparently is sticking to our wax paper. But that'll be all right. We are going to punch our dough down and then fold from the sides in and flip it over and then we're going to let it rise for about another 45 minutes or so. All right, our dough has doubled in size. I just punched it down one more time, and now I'm gonna roll it out onto a lightly floured surface here, and we're gonna try and roll this into a rectangle as best we can. We're then going to roll the dough tightly and then pinch the ends to close them off. With the palms of our hands, we are going to roll this out and lengthen it. And then on the sheet that we prepared earlier, it says we are going to lay this diagonally and shape it into a loaf. 
We're then going to take a knife and every two inches cut a diagonal slash that is about a quarter of an inch thick. All right, I have one egg white and a tablespoon of water that I have added to this. I'm just gonna beat it a little bit and then we're gonna brush it on the top of our loaf. And after our loaf has again risen to about double its size, we're gonna be pretty close to putting it in the oven here. And we're gonna save the rest of that because we will be using it later on a couple of times actually. We're going to cover it up again and then wait for this to double in size yet again. We're almost ready to put our bread in the oven. It is almost doubled here and I've got the oven heated to 425 degrees which is the first temperature. We're actually going to be shifting temperatures down as we cook so stick around to see how that's going to change as we go. Uh, the recipe actually says to make this a little crustier that we are going to put a flat pan on the bottom rack of the oven and we're going to put boiling water. So I've got some water heating up here and that's going to go in just before we put our bread in and I'll make sure to show you what the bread looks like before it goes in. It's actually looking pretty darn good. So before this goes in the oven, we're going to brush it one more time with the egg and water mixture. And then we're gonna put it in the oven at 425 degrees for about 10 minutes or so. At this point, you're going to brush your bread one more time with that egg mixture. Drop the temperature to 375 degrees. And then that's gonna be in there for about 15 minutes. And after those 15 minutes are up, you're gonna brush it one final time. And then it's gonna be in there, continuing at 375 degrees for about 25 minutes or so or until the bread is golden brown and done. If I hadn't made this and you put this bread in front of me, I would have thought this came from a bakery. This was exactly what you picture when you picture French bread from a bakery. It had a perfect crust that was crisp, yet gentle. The inside was soft. It was a fine crumb. It was a little chewy. The bottom had that cornmeal. It was stunning as far as French bread goes. However, this was a ton of work. It was not all that easy, and in the end, I thought the product was not worth the labor that went into it. I would much rather go to my local bakery and pay $2 and walk away with a French bread that tastes and looks exactly like this and let somebody else do all the work. That's the only reason that this repeat recipe score is so low. Otherwise, I absolutely would make this again. If you're bound and determined to make your own French bread, I highly, highly, highly recommend this recipe. It was tremendous. That lands French bread in place number 12 for now, but we have more exciting recipes planned, including some from 1930s advertising brochures, amongst other recipes. So make sure you're subscribing so you can see our future episodes and stay tuned in to what we're doing here on Recipe Reviver. See you next time.